One of our viewers asked a question that has been asked me in a number of ways. And this particular viewer says, would you, uh, I would welcome a video on what to do about oil paint when it's too thick. Well, you'll be surprised, but there's some squeezing involved in this one. Did you know that one way to get to know your oil paint, now this is true for oil paint, not for acrylics, and not for watercolor, or in, in, well, to a point for gouache, but get it right with oil paint and you'll solve it yourself some problems you might be having. That squeezing the tube is very important to getting to know the, the consistency of the paint, or the way the consistency of the paint is going to come out of the tube, and the way it's going to work in your brush. So sometimes we have tubes that have been lying around for a while, I mean like years, uh, and they still got lots of paint in them. Uh, and we don't want to waste that, so we'll reach for it. And then what happens, you start to paint with that stuff, and it doesn't flow on smoothly with the brush. So uh, I want to show you the difference of what I'm talking about. Now one thing, also, oh I forgot about this, Let me let me point this out. Just because you've just bought a tube from the art store, art supply store, doesn't mean it's fresh. Sometimes tubes of paint can sit on the on the shelves in the store months and months and months and years. The longer it sits on the shelf, the more the oil tends to separate from the pigment and the stiffer it gets. Now some brands are worse than others about that. But one thing that is necessary is for you to get to know the brand that's always consistency always consistent in its um, in its pliability and and stick to that and always test them in the art store the your you, the uh, the owners of the store is not going to be too happy about that but just give it a slight little tug like that um, but let me show you if you have two tubes I have two tubes right here now you can't see what I can feel but if I give this one a slight little tug it doesn't give. If I give this one a slight little tug, I feel slight give. Now, it's not significant, but you learn, you develop a sensitivity and a touch for that. Okay, let's see how this one squeezes out on the palette. So, one thing that I noticed when I first look at it is that there's some oil gathered at the top. Now, I confess that I've already ciphered out. So, if you hold a paper towel against the top, if, it, if the tube has oil coming out of the top, especially when you press it like this, you press it against a paper towel like that, you'll prevent that oil coming out and running all over your palette. That's part of it. Now, when you squeeze it, if you have to go to a real effort in the squeezing, that's probably a clue too. Let's see what happens when I squeeze this one. See there, it comes out. Well, so but there, that's not all. Now I'm going to put this, this cap back on. And I'm going to compare with this one. Okay, when I reach for this tube and I look at it here, I don't see any oil collected. But just in case, I'll do this. Just to be sure that there's no extra oil in there. Um, now, if there is extra oil, it doesn't mean that the paint's too stiff because sometimes that happens in, uh, in all the paints, depending on lots of things. So just test it to be sure there's not extra oil coming from here. Now when I squirt with this one, it, it feels a little easier. It's not doesn't have the resistance. So I put this right here and I can see when it comes out of the tube, it comes out looser. I can tell that, but building a sensitivity to that is part of what's going to make paint work for you. Alright, now the next test is going to be with a palette knife. And, you know, this is a routine thing. I'm going very slow, but it's a routine thing I do every time when I'm setting my palette. Uh, test the pliability. This, if it resists you, this one, look at, see there, that has a slight resistance to it. 
I can feel it when I go that is not going to go on the canvas very well now if I test that with the brush and then I see see it's not it the the, the canvas is resisting it it's not really going on the canvas very well alright so I'm going to rinse the brush out now and let's test the other one against that be sure I got all that medium pulled out of the brush all the uh, solvent rather pulled out of the brush and also be sure I've got my palette knife clean now I test that feels so nice and pliable I can tell by the lack of resistance when I when I press down and spread it with the palette knife I can tell by and you can also tell by the pattern you see this is a much more distinct and a pattern has a harder edge to it than this does so let's test that one so they will load the brush and I can tell when I pull the brush into it how the paint goes into the brush much more easily I don't have to kind of force the brush into it and so then I, ah yes you see how easily that goes on as compared to this see it's smooth it blended well this has got hunks of paint here and blank spots there and so on and I was using the same method of applying the paint in each one of those so what do we do about that we don't abandon the third one and, and uh, you don't really you don't really solve this by using a medium while you're painting with oil which brings up another subject I never paint with medium unless I need the uh, paint to dry quickly in that case I'll use a little liquid but if your oil is pliable easy to handle why use the medium it just makes it well I won't go into that but let's let's look at what we will do about this now because I know that the binder in oil paint is usually linseed oil or even if it's another oil linseed oil will be compatible with it I'm going to add linseed oil to it now here again we must be careful we add only a little bit at a time and I use my palette knife for that and I'm sure I've got the palette knife the nice and clean and so this is the this is refined linseed oil it's artist grade refined linseed oil you don't want to use that linseed oil that you get at the hardware store but it needs to be artist grade linseed or refined linseed oil okay so I'm going to just get the tip of my palette knife in there and drop one drop don't go too fast with this stuff because it may not take as much as you think now here requires a little bit of work. We've got to gradually work this in to this paint. And I can tell already by as I'm working in, I can tell it's not enough because it's uh it's I can see 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 how really, really see, see the peaks on that are so sharp, whereas the peaks on this one are not sharp. So that needs I uh, means I probably need a couple of other drops. So I'm gonna do it again. But once again, if you get it too thin then you're going to lose control of your paints. I put two drops on at that time. I had one that fell down here. But let's see if that, let's see how that, ah, that's beginning to work. Now, you're going to notice when you do that, when the paint is really stiff, it gets kind of cloddy when you're working it. See, see what I mean right there, how cloddy that looks? You keep working it. And you work it by pulling from the edge, from the edge of the paint into the paint and pressing down like you would soften butter I've got a little bit of oil dripping down here I need to wipe away okay and 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 you you're just uh, it's, it requires being patient now what we do what I'm doing I'm not just dab 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 I'm pushing with this part of the palette knife not just the point of the palette knife but I'm pulling it from the edge and pushing in pull it from the edge and pushing in and what I want to do is continue that process until the whole thing is the same consistency and you can feel it you can watch it and you can feel it it's very important to do that to keep an eye on it to watch what's happening here and watch compare uh, the feeling of the consistency of this to the feeling of the consistency of that it's a and you want it <laughs> I'm telling you what you want my preference is to have all my paint colors the same consistency if they're the same consistency throughout then I know that I'm going to have 
a good control of my brushwork when I do a painting. So that is very nice and mixed now, and it feels right. It feels now the right consistency. So let's give it a test and see. And the test is necessary. So got the brush nice and clean and dry. Now, oh yes, that's much easier. How so much easier to load. The brush is going into it smoothly. And when I put the strokes, oh yes, now that that's what we're talking about. That's what we're going after. Well, I don't have to put much effort into it. The paint go the brush strokes go on smoothly, they cover the canvas, they blend one into the other. That's exactly what we're looking for, that kind of consistency. Now, if you're already loading your palette, you've already got other colors on your palette, I've got other quick tips where, uh, where I use a, an auxiliary palette, which is easy to make, and I can't remember which quick tip it is, but search. Go to our, our channel page and search for the, uh, I, I think I call it the Value 5 palette. But if you got if you have an auxiliary palette, if you have especially if you have several tubes that are stiff and you you've got to get them in condition before you paint with them, then it will be a lot less messier if you use an auxiliary palette like this, or you could just use a paper palette. You could get the little pad of paper palettes that you would use just for that if you wanted to, and do the conditioning of the paint here and then apply it to the palette to your working palette so that is very important it's important that your paint is uh, that you have control of your paint that you know what to expect of it when you pick it up with your brush and if you always know what to expect then you can control the brush strokes you can apply the paint onto the canvas and make it do exactly what you want it to do be sure to view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DyingMinds.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.